is the Kimber KDS-9C, the Supreme Gentleman's carry gun. There's a good chance it could check that box. However, it may miss the mark on some carry gun features for these specific types of shooters. And for some of you, it will have every feature you desire at a price point which is not rivaled. Now let's investigate if this Kimber is a good choice for you or not. slide release again. When the sky falls. Kimber, KDS-9C. Big shout out to Kimber America for supporting the channel. This is the first time we had Kimber products on the channel. So I reached out to Everett at Kimber. He and the marketing team got these guns out to us. So we appreciate the support for those. They are here for the channel and they are ours to keep for future content. So with all that out the way, Kimber KDS-9C. This thing is super sleek. This would be what I consider a gentleman's carry gun. I have a buddy of mine who is an attorney. Um, I've helped him with many of his staff to get their firearms concealed carry permits. And then we do some training every once in a while, get together, barbecue, shoot guns. And a lot of his staff carry in the office. He carries in the office openly as well. And um, they are big 2A supporters and uh, it's always nice to have an attorney in your pocket. So before I get too far in the review of the KDS-9C, let me tell you a little about what I do here at RDR. We're a soft goods manufacturer. We specialize in plate carriers, placards, chest rigs, a full line of Safari Land, holsters, holster mods, holster accessories, all which you can find on our website at rdrgear.com. As I shoot more red dot guns, I don't ever notice a co-witness issue or do I need a co-witness, right? As a non-professional end user, I don't feel the co-witness thing is so much of a need. Some folks rely on it desperately. Um, when you look at some pretty heavy hitters in the USPSA world, they don't even have sights on their gun. So when you look at the plate, if you'll notice, their rear sight is shorter than the height of the RMR, right? And the reason that is, is because these are dovetailed sights. So when this front sight was in there and the cover plate's on the gun, the rear sight is in line with the front sight. So when you take the plate off and add the RDS plate, the height is thicker. You can see how thick this plate is. And so now the dot is higher, hence obstructing the co-witness of the iron sights. I don't know if it's a drastic issue, as I mentioned earlier, but it would have been nice for Kimber to kind of take that into consideration. But if you did want a co-witness, like as a concealed carrier, that's your preference to have a co-witness. You'll need to not do this at home because you can mar the finish very quickly. Um, these are dovetail irons. They do make taller sights. You would need a taller rear and taller front. Now, with how height, how tall this rear of the RMR is, plus the plate, your rear sight is going to be inside your window and your front sight is gonna be very tall. So for concealed carry holsters, that might be an issue. Plate options, you do have several. Uh, of course, RMRs you see here. You have the Vortex Venom, I believe, and then the, all the K-series, so Hollow Sun 407, 507, K-models that you can get on the Kimber website. Again, the plate does not come with the pistol. Uh, the RMR plate I did order from the Kimber website, and it was like 110 bucks, so not cheap but it is what it is if you wanna run this gun optics. Uh, I highly recommend you get the optics. Um, you may not even have to go RMR. I just had extra RMRs laying around. That's why I did the, the RMR plate. I have been running um, some EPS carries on narrower carry guns, and I really do like that red dot, the EPS carry, so that would be something you could consider, and then you'd reduce that bulk significantly for a carry gun option. As I mentioned earlier, four inch stainless steel barrel, 30 degree, 30 degree recessed crown. 
it just looks clean on the front end as well. Everybody will say a crown barrel will give you some performance upgrades. Um, I don't know, I don't think us as regular shooters would see a difference of a crowned and uncrowned barrel. But at the end of the day, I do really like it for that aesthetic look to it. As I always refer to this thing as a gentleman's carry gun, um, it's a good feature to complement the rest of the pistol. The frame is 775 aluminum CNC'd frame. It is a difference here because this is the KDS-9C railed version. The original one that came out did not have a light rail. Uh, and again, people were in uproar, oh my God, no rail. Newsflash, not everybody wants to carry a weapon light on their gun. You'll be surprised how many times I get co phone calls or emails from guys who want duty holsters without weapon lights, but with red dots, right? That's just, so far in land, that's not their jam um, due to their end user, but a lot of times guys are not putting, I personally, I don't carry the weapon light on a handgun, I carry a handheld flashlight. Um, my school thought is one, I came up working the EP world, I didn't have weapon lights. We all did handheld flashlight. Benefit of a handheld flashlight, the light can go places, the gun does not have to go. So again, you can look rear, you can look left, you can look right, whatever you wanna do. Um, you can do a full 180 with a handgun out in a direction of a threat and look behind you, the gun doesn't have to go with you. So again, if you don't have a weapon line of handgun, you are not at a huge disadvantage. You just have to know how to train around not having a weapon light on the pistol and a weapon light in your hand. And of course, the honest answer is to go to the range and do this all day is a lot harder than doing this all day and working a light. So there's a task that you have to master, which is that dominant hand shooting or that support hand shooting. So that's just something that sometimes people don't want to put the work in to get those skill sets. You guys know me, I like an ambi safety on a pistol. Um, I just feel that's a good thing to have. It's a little different on the Kimber. Um, I don't know why they did it. Um, I did try to reach out, but I didn't get an answer back yet. So the left side is a much thinner than the right side, which is much wider. Traditionally, to make sure you sweep that, the wider ledge is on the inside, the thinner ledge is on the outside. And I feel like when I was coming up in the training in being taught at, at work, we used ejection ports as touch points, right? Versus being down here where there wasn't anything, yeah, your brain knows you're on the side of the gun, but we would actually, the instructor used to tell us, touch points for ejection port, because it's sharp, you know it's there, and then now you can't, you can do whatever you need to do, put pressure, and that finger inside the ejection port doesn't, I can't make it slip. If I put pressure here, I can slip off just like that into the trigger guard. So again, that's just different schools of thought in regards to touch point positions on the pistol. But with that there, if I go to a high touch point and drop that safety, you can see how it impacts my index finger. If I do that as a lefty, right? Say I'm a lefty and I'm putting my gun up here on my index finger on top of the slide here. I drop that safety. It clears the meat of my finger with no problem because the ledge here is thinner than the right side. So that's just something that when I noticed it was kind of strange because when you look at other guns, normally the wider is inside, thinner is on outside. So that just could be design of, of this pistol. With how well the gun is blended in areas that you grip the pistol, the one area that I felt was a little sharp for me, and it only happened once today, so again, it's all how I grip the pistol, but the slide stop is slightly extended, right, which I do like because when the gun is locked to the rear, I can insert a magazine, change grip, drop slide. I don't have to get too much of a crazy hand change to get that, but if you notice this angle here, um, the ledge right here has a very sharp rear. And today I got too high up on the thumb and the recoil, one, it stopped the slide from locking the rear, two, it's very sharp. Um, when you poke on it, it's not comfortable. So that could have been a little more blending there, but what I really liked is how well the rear was blended right here in the safeties. Um, the Kimber Rapide that we reviewed prior, that blending is not nearly as clean as the Kimber is here with the KDS-9C. This whole back end right here does very, very well um, in that whole contour, the kind of bobbed tail here, blending into the magazine. Uh, 
it's just a very comfortable in the hand in that position here. The cross hatch with the panels here, um, I like them a lot. I like, again, I keep referring to the gentleman's carry. I love how all the lines meet together. Uh, very, very well done there. If someone said, hey man, we got some new grip panels that are slightly more aggressive, I'd be down for sure. Um, this is, is a little slick. But benefit to that is if you were carrying this gun in a suit and tie format, which I carried many times in a holster with a, a suit and tie on, um, you're not killing dress shirts on the daily with an aggressive grip. So that is one benefit to that. Um, I say slightly aggressive would be a benefit, but is it slippery in the hand? Absolutely not. Um, this is plenty enough for daily carry for an EDC gun. Um, there was no slippage, no movement, you know, not hard to hang on to. Um, very well done. And again, the styling is phenomenal. Reversible magazine release. I really, really like how clean this magazine release works. Um, the angle, the texture, uh, very well done and it is reversible for you lefties out there. So if you wanted to, you can reverse that and have, so when you're shooting as a lefty, that middle finger doesn't catch that mag release and drop the mag and shooting it. So it is reversible, which most single action style pistols don't have reversible safety. So that's one benefit on the KDS-9C. One last thing to you guys to know, um, grip panels, as I didn't, they are proprietary. There is a proprietary locking design here um, on that. The other thing I forgot to mention you guys earlier when I was talking about frame is undercut. This really does help get this gun into the hand much better. Um, you'll notice at times when guys are beveling and taking material out of here, that's because with the contours of that knuckle, now it being a kind of undercut and flat, it sits in the same position inside the hand. So therefore, it's just a much cleaner and much more comfortable to get the gun. But once you get this gun in the hand, you can lock this sucker down pretty tight, has very minimal recoil due to how well this undercut works. Uh, magazines. If I had to nitpick something on this pistol, this would be where it's at. It does come with two, one flush and one extended. Um, the one thing about these, they're number one, they're proprietary. Number two, 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Um, that's just one of the, one of the byproducts there. Uh, this pistol without a red dot, um, I believe MSRP was close to 1800, I believe. Don't quote me on that one. They're not cheap um, by any means. Uh, again, MSRP, I share that with you just for a full disclosure. Um, that's not street price, that's not map price, because there isn't a map price. So your due diligence is to go online, find the best deal, find the best, the dealer has the best price, and have that gun ship to your local FFL. But you're not paying MSRP. So, oh, I'd buy a staccato, or I, I would do this, sure, great. But at the end of the day, you're probably gonna be in the probably low to mid 15s for this gun, maybe 16s. But at the end of the day, for what you're getting, for this gun, for when I, as I referenced earlier, the gentleman's carry gun, optics ready, 2011 style pistol with double stack high capacity magazine, ambi safeties, red dot compatibility, light rail, very, very good trigger and very good ergonomics as a gun. The competitor to this pistol is around $2,800. So what Kimber has done with the KDS-9C is a very, very good package option. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, holsters, do your due diligence. If you love this gun, you wanna get one. The only thing I know right now is a possibility that I've been told from Kimber that they are coming is the guys are at uh, TXE. And so reach out to them, check their website out. They make some great product um, and do your due diligence on holsters because again, this is a little bit of a unicorn in regard to how it works, how it functions, especially with the short rail, the wider uh, width of an RMR if you go RMR. And this has a shorter safety. And again, this extended slide stop will need some CAD design to have a release for the draw and reholster. All right, listen up you jabronis. The Kimber KDS-9C ain't just your average pistol. It's a straight up game changer with, a, with ex, its extreme precision engineering and compact design, this bad boy packs a serious punch. Whether you're hitting the range or keeping yourself safe on the streets, the KDS-9C's got your back. So if you wanna walk tall and feel like a true champion, you know what to do. Grab yourself a Kimber KDS-9C, unleash the smackdown on anything that comes your way. Just remember, the KDS-9C, in your hands, you're unstoppable.
Sincerely, The Rock. 